The brightness in his way to draw. With a great illumination of let your life shine. That light that knocked Saul down on the way to Damascus. That light that John saw in the island of Papa. The brightness of your face like the sun. You and I could look at this light and our eyes could handle it. Then when the sun shining in the road, then sometimes you can't even look up. And the sun that is a million miles away, you can't even look at it. Imagine if you are that close. That is the Son of God, the light. The light that lighted inside you. The brightness of that light that could turn you into a walking flashlight. Say, Lord, give me the grace and teach me, Lord, to spend time in your presence. It only comes not just once in a while, but a consistent time in the presence of God. The Bible said Moses only stayed 40 days. They had to cover his face. Because he began to look like the atmosphere that he has been. Can we learn from that? He did not recognize him, but the people saw him. Everyone said Moses has been in the presence of the Lord. He began to look. If he had stayed longer, he would have become a whole different person. Just for 40 days, the glow of his appearance was defeating every imagination and the thought of the natural man. They knew something had taken place. What is happening to you? As you constantly dwell in the presence of God. Is it only in church? Do you understand the great benefit that you receive spending time in the presence of God? Hallelujah. Father Lord, we thank you tonight as we come to learn at your feet. Say, Lord, teach me. Say, Lord, I have come to learn at your feet. Lord, I humble myself. Lord, give me knowledge. Prayer tonight, Lord, give me knowledge. Let the knowledge of your word dwell deep inside my spirit. But Lord, give me Empower me with your special grace to apply the knowledge of the world and live a life of the knowledge of who you are. Lord Jesus, I pray to my reveal yourself to me. Let us not fall in dangerous situations by not following your instruction. Lord, teach us, Lord, that our spirit man is subject, is attracted to your instruction. Give us access to your instruction. Our spirit man should understand it. It is one thing to hear something. It is one thing to know something. It's another thing to apply it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have your way tonight. We've come empty handed, Lord, that you might give us something. We come empty, oh God, that you might fill us up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may be seated. You are welcome tonight as we continue on the service, the danger of neglecting godly instruction. These words are not just coming to us by asking. There's a season 
that God brings his word. There are things that are going on in the realm of the spirit, brethren, that you need to be aware of. Nothing happens in the physical except it's the running up in the spirit realm. We must understand that. No one of us here is existing physically that did not exist first in the realm of the spirit. Before Jeremiah was born, the Lord said, I knew you before you went in your mother's womb. Hallelujah. So we must understand that the Lord knew John the Baptist even before he was born. Names have, babies have been named even before they entered their mother's womb. So we must understand that the realm of the spirit is very important because God is spirit. And so it is critical for us for our thought and our heart to lean towards seeking God's instruction. Understanding that this is God's instruction. Find it. Look for the instructions of God. Look for the manner that God wants you to look and follow the direction because it is not your ways. Isaiah 55 said that to us. Verse 8 to 10 says, Your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. The way you will put that thing together is not the way I will. So make sure that you wait patiently enough Make sure you learn to wait. If you have never heard from God, learn to wait to hear from Him. There is patience required. There is time required. His time is not your time. I assure you, if you wait on Him, the Lord will speak. It's a day that we shall surely renew their strength. Let everybody set on their journey and be running. Wait on the Lord. The day the Lord gives you instruction, you will arrive before everybody. And tonight, we continue in that series of great, mighty kings and leaders but they have fallen short of following God's instruction. It never ends well. Every effort they make to manipulate a situation ends up in tragedy and in failure. Tell your Bibles this tonight to false kings. False kings chapter 22. Talking about positions of authority, kings, leaders, head of homes, there are rules and there are laws that God has set down. Today we see that the world is in a whole different structure of chaos because what God has structured, man is trying to put a whole different structure under it. It will not work. It will not last. First King chapter 22, I read from verse 1. And they continued three years. The children of Israel continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. Verse 2. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto him, servants, said to his servants, Know ye that Ramah in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take 
take it now out of the hands of the king of Syria. And Jehoshaphat said unto, and he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramon Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art. My people are thy people. My horses are thy horses. As thy horses. Yes. We brothers. We couples. We are families. Your things are mine. We are one. And of a truth that belongs to us that the Assyrians have possessed. Yes. Right now it's not in your hand. Should we go to war and get it back? Is this the time? It's very important that we understand times and seasons. Because your time is not God's time. And he went to him and said these things. Verse 5. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at what? At the word of the Lord today. I'll go to war with you. I will fight this battle which I will join you in this war. I will follow you so we, so you can get this land back. You can get this possession back. But I'm giving one condition. We need an instruction from the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, that is not just knowledge. That is wisdom. Because a horse is prepared for battle. But victory only comes from God. And we go, we have the ammunition, we have the weapons. Horses are used for war. We have the sword, we have the armor, we have the manpower. We believe by both of us combining together, we are even bigger than the Syrians. But should we go? Do you know how important that is in the life of a believer? That anything you want to do, you drop on your knees. And say, my father, Lord, it seems like it is easy. It's something that I can just go and get. The Lord, this is the time. Give me the instruction. That was a wise king. That was a wise leader. That was a wise friend who is looking for God's instruction. That is a wise wife. A wise husband. A wise Christian. A wise believer. We said, God, How do I go about this? Should we go? And how do you seek instruction from God? Because when God says go, just that go is an assurance for victory. Believe me. Listen to this. If God gives you an instruction to go, He will go with you. God will not leave you. God will not separate himself. When the Lord says go, he has already gone ahead of you. He will create a pathway. He will make the connection. Go, go to the word of God. Let's read. And the king of Israel. He says, seek of the Lord today. Verse 6. 
If you understand, shout him in. Then the king of Israel did what? Gather what? The prophets together. King is in the leadership position. Prophets are those that seek the face of God. They have a duty to reach God and wait on God and hear from God and deliver the message of God to the people. It is important in your home. It is very important in your ministry. It is important in your marriage. It is important in every aspect of your life. Don't become too rich that you don't seek God anymore. Don't become too intelligent that you don't seek God anymore. Don't let material acquisition make you separate yourself from seeking God's instruction. Listen to the laws of God. This is the word of God. He says the arms of flesh will fail you. And he said, woe. Are you with me tonight? Woe is a curse on any man who puts his trust in man. Do not trust on your intelligence, no matter how smart you are. Are you with me? Even if you are a PhD doctorate degree, and one plus one is put in front of you, kneel down and ask God for help. Humble yourself to recognize that your PhD degree cannot solve that problem. Even if you think you can, put God first. It's the highest level of respect and honor that opens door for God to relate with you and involve in your situation. Because you can solve that problem and do it very well and not find a way back home. Then when God, when you put in force and as you are solving the problem on your way back home, if there are problems, the Lord will deliver you. Why? When you are going to solve that problem you think that you can solve, you involve God. Don't call him when you solve it, then you can get home. But the last thing you thought you could do everything. Jesus said, I am the way. When you were going to solve it, I was not invited. Because why do you think you can? And actually you have what it takes to solve it. You have no idea after you solve it, there are many things that makes up the problem. Brother, let us learn this today. And this is what the king did. The six, he called who? The prophets. Together. How many? Four hundred. 400 prophets 400 pastors gather the prophet together about how many? 400 men and said unto them shall I go against Ramon Gilead to battle or shall I what forbear listen brethren The world we are in today, we are in the last days. And the Bible says many will turn into fables. Many will hear the things they want to hear. Listen to me, brethren. If you are truly, if I am truly in this time that we are in, looking for the truth. The place might not look like the place you want. It might not be a friendly place, but you know the truth is there. Brethren, unfortunately today, we want to hear the things that makes us feel good. The word of God is very powerful. He said, listen, this is a word of God instruction. You shall know the truth. And what will the truth do to you? The truth, no matter how much shame, no matter the problem life will put on you, no matter the situation, even they have dug the grave because and they try to put your lifeless body in it, the truth will raise you up. 
That is how powerful the truth is. Why? The truth never dies. It is it, those that are trying to kill the truth are actually helping the truth accomplish its purpose. That is the reason why after Christ was crucified in this day, the priests of this world in the realm of the spirit, one regret that they still put their hand on their jaw and bite their finger is that they, they crucified the soul. Up to this day, is the biggest pain in the realm of the spirit in the kingdom of God. We have no clue we were set up into our worst failure and yet we thought we were winning. The truth. When the truth leads you, you can't be back. They buried Jesus. Get the Roman soldiers to surround the grave. How will you, how will you get soldiers? Listen to me. That, that tells you there's a level of consciousness in their, in their mind. A fear. A high level of concern. That they are dealing with an uncommon and unfamiliar territory. And they are trying to use human effort to suppress it. In case he shakes his body, they were threatened by resurrection. They were still words going around that paraventure he rises because we have heard him or overheard him saying, I will rise. Do you know what it means to pay soldiers to stay around the grave? One grave. How many soldiers we saw? Even if he's going to rise, don't you think one soldier would have been enough with a spear and just, you know, wait right there and do not pierce him again? Where is the strength to rise after one day, two days, three days? Are you with me? You should be going home and say, at least the body should be decaying by now. Huh? They stay and reinforce. Watch this. Watch this. That's not enough. Let's put a stone and roll the stone over it. That is a level of panic. The level of threat that truth gives to lies. Brethren, say, Lord, give me the grace to seek your instruction. Give me the grace to follow your instruction. The danger of neglecting God's instruction. These are king, king of Judah and king of Israel discussing. And one is saying, no, if we're going to go to this war, we need to seek God. They never understood that the resurrection of Christ is not just a man getting up from the grave. Huh? Then the man tried to push the stone and realized that the stone is against the day of resurrection the whole ground was shaking that's what the Bible, Bible calls the power of resurrection understand this tonight and the mystery behind it is that we as believers as Christians need to understand and tap on the word of God the reason is that this same power dwell it where? in your mortal body least this, it, it dwells in this mortal body. What are you doing with it? When you don't use power, the power is useless. You activate it by prayer and reminder, a conscious reminder of yourself that I carry this in me. Lord, manifest yourself. Jesus, manifest yourself. Holy Ghost, manifest. You open your mouth, not, not just your heart, because just as you believe and tremble, the devil believes and tremble. But when you open your mouth, there's a confession that's made. There's an aroma that's carried from the horns of the altar to the throne and say, I hear the voice of my child. Don't live a life of silence. Live a life of prayer. Learn to open your mouth. If you go to an interview, you close your mouth. You don't even whisper. You speak loud so they can hear you. It's by your answers that huh? the job will be determined. Are you with me? So why do you stand before the king and be silent? Oh 
that resurrection. Jesus led them because the power that came shook that grave. So this man said, let us do what? Seek the Lord. And 400 prophets came. 400. And unto the said, said, I go against Ramon Gilead to battle. And they said, go up. Listen, go up for what the Lord shall do. Deliver it into the hands of the king. The Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. Go! And Jehoshaphat said, is there, no, is there not here a prophet of the Lord beside that? Be, be, besides that we might what inquire of him. There are 400 pastors and preachers and men of God telling you to go. You are asking for it. Is there no other one? Do you know why? It doesn't matter how people will bend the gospel. Your spirit inside you will tell you this is true. See that until you might be in a congregation, let me tell you, something inside you, you will look and look and try. It's like everybody acting to be dressed up while they are naked and nobody wants to acknowledge that they are not in all. Don't you see my robe? Don't you see my dress? Yes, you look good. Yes, you look good. But actually, everybody is wearing nothing. 400 prophets say, The Lord has given us. That is the reason why you don't need 400 prophets. Stay in God's face. Wait on the Lord. Therefore, look at your track record of hearing from God. And so when the Lord speaks to you, you have a peace in your heart. Where you will not even doubt. And even when people are talking, you show deaf ears to them. Careless. It is very important because why? God's instruction will not fail you. It happened in the life of Daniel. Daniel stood up among 100. Listen to me, brethren. 100 princes and leaders, presidents. Shadrach, me, three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood up among what? Leaders and nations and governors and princes. You will expect them. That is the reason as a child of God. Not because the governor is here, you are rubbing on the floor. The president is in the church, you are you, you, you rubbing on the floor, begging. Die and go to heaven, living in a cave, and go to hell, living in a mansion. And go to heaven with nothing, with no food. That coming before men and selling the best right. 400 prophets saying the Lord said, Are you with me? And I've seen it in time of global situations. And ministers and pastors are creating versions of things that are not true, that are not right, that are not God, using the name of Christ, lowering the standard of God, and believing in something else. When the blood of Christ says something else, don't even tell me something else. So, what have we been doing on those crusades? Where is the Jesus that made the world walk, that God speak, that raised the dead and opened the eyes of the blind? What happened to that same Jesus that shed his blood and said, By my stripes, for as many that come unto me, I will know why it's cast out. Be the lepers. Because the system said it. Because the political antichrist said it. Because the religious antichrist said it. Because the economical antichrist said it. And not only that, because they have put some money in your pocket. Close the house of God. Go and sit at home. So worry about the money. Don't worry, we'll give you money. Church is about money anyway. How much offerings and tithe do you get a month? 100,000, we'll give you 200,000. Go and tell the people this. 
good help from the Lord. 400 prophets saying, go to war. No more than the Lord say, I've seen the sheep like slaughter in the field with no shepherd. Many have died senseless dead. And the Lord said, I will require blood in the hand of men. I speak this under this camera and by the special grace of God. Thank God for God's judgment. You make heaven as an unmarried member that you go to hell as a pastor. I say it tonight. No title will give you a ticket to heaven. You could be apostle, reverend, doctor, bishop, abishop, no matter what you are. No title will assess you to heaven. There's a standard. 400, listen to this. 400 are declaring an instruction and say, that says the Lord. The Lord said this. So who are you? These are 400 old, experienced, talented theologians with all 400 are saying, go! This is what the Lord is saying. Because why? We become familiar with God and we think we can arrange the way God works. It's yours. Go and get it. Because your army, the armies of Judah plus the armies of Israel, they are big enough to, to take them down. There's somebody deep down in the spirit was not taking it and was seeking more. And Joisha verse 7 said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord beside that we might what inquire of him? So who are these ones? Who are these ones? Because these are the ones that sell the healing of God. Who are these ones? Held it for 5,000. Huh? If you need a child, 50,000. Huh? And I'm going to add some fasting to receive 100,000. Add it to it. Yes. These are the ones. Verse 8. And the king of Israel said, Listen to this, unto Joshua. There is what? Yet one. I will pray over you today. Labra, Shanta. You will be that one in your generation. You listen to me. Listen to me, brethren. If you are afraid to be hated, you are not ready to be of God. None of us can change this word of God. He said, they that must live of godly. We do what? We suffer persecution. Number two. One requirement, he said, you will be hated. Number two, you will be hated by many. He said, understand this hate because they hated me first. So don't expect them to treat you different. You will be hated because of me. And so he said, there is what? One. What, what is this battle about? Instruction from God. We need to know, should we go to war? Are you with me, brethren? And that is the reason why I encourage us in the ministry, in this church, that no matter what is going on, it is good we pray, seek God, wait on the Lord, let the Lord speak to us. But in the midst of this, there are many that will still follow and there are many that will not. But at least, the word of God is going to come. Brethren, there are things that are heading in the realm of the Spirit, heading down this way, that is worse than what we've seen before. Nothing compared to it. It's not the one that they were giving you permission to make a choice to stay home. This is a force. They will lead people into places and be apprehended and be kept somewhere. People will go out and not come back home. I'm speaking to you what the Lord revealed. Many will be lured by the time you get to a place as a result of this, you cannot go back. This is the place you have to go. They will get you into where you have to be. From there, you call your family members. The day you are not your God, there shall be a great manifestation. I am speaking this to you. If the nation, if the world have not seen the figure of God, it's going to take a time. It's not there you pray. You pray now so you know how to pray then. You see, there's one. Take note of this, write it down and put a date. <laughs> I'm not throwing a vague word to you. I will remind you when it comes to pass. I will speak to you what the Lord has not revealed to me. But we have to be prepared. There 
this one, Michael, the son of who? Emma, by whom we may what? Inquire of the Lord. Somebody read the next part. They cannot. Like, somebody, can you? Is that in the Bible? I saw something there. Yes. Did you see anything there? But I hate him. I, mm, I hate I him. I can't stand him. Mm. Let me tell you. He, you are reading it now because we're reading it. When a king speaks, he speaks with authority. That word is not just coming. I hate him. He's with some. Like if, 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 if he was in front of him, you could see the veins of his face expressing how much the hate is. That hate is not just hate, that hate has weight. He has a track record of offenses uh, that are not forgiven. That I don't want to see him again. Don't I, I know he, I'm the one bringing him up. I know there's one more left. I don't like him. That is the reason why I didn't bring him among these 400. I don't want. I. The only way I can describe him to you is this. I hate him. Listen to me. When the king hates a man, what is left of that man? That's it. But let me tell you what's important. He could hate him, but God loves him. Worry less about haters. Focus on the love that God has for you. Listen to me, brethren. Let the world hate you as a church. If God loves you, you are a winner, man. Talk to someone and say, You are a winner, man. You are a winner, man, all the time. Rome can only call you winner, man, winner, man, winner, man. Jesus is a winner, man, a winner, man, all the time. He said, I hate you. Let's go further. This is about instruction. Who cares? Does it matter where the instruction comes from? I hate him. Why? For he does not want to prophesy good concerning me. Why? Because everything you get your hand into is not good. You have a problem of not doing good stuff. And each time the Lord's word comes, He has turned the prophetic word to be the man's word. The bishop don't like me. The reverend don't like me. The pastor don't like me. Even when I pray, the pastor doesn't answer. You have no idea. Just walk past you and pray for you. You have no idea. His ear did not even hear you. Why? Because his ear is. Have you? Have somebody been talking to you today? You're talking to somebody. And the person finished. The one that I said, "Is it? Were you talking? Are you with me? Have, have you have you find yourself in a situation that somebody asks you, what, what did I say? Is it? Um, um, were you talking? Do you know why your mind were on things that are more relevant that have captured your soul in such a dimension that? Okay, go back. I, I remember you start, you stopped from when you stop at McDonald's and you fix up fries. I think that was where the last word I heard you say. So, so all of the things I said after that, you didn't hear that. I'm sorry, honey. Especially if it's an ill or you are finished. <laughs> you don't. The higher disrespect of it. Son, I need to talk to you by your wife. Are you with me? Shall we This man says that he never what prophesied good concerning me. The only thing I want you to look at your Bible. This man, this king is talking. The only thing he prophesies what? But evil. And Joshua said, Let not the king say so. Give him one more chance. Don't say so, king. Huh? Don't say so. Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called who? An officer. And let me tell you, the kings, when they speak something, they speak very loud with authority and everybody is scared. Huh? And they are hearing it. Everybody in the palace is hearing it. Huh? And he says, go. 
Taste it not, please. Micah, the son of Ammon, verse 10, and the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, and the king of Judah, sat each on his throne. There were two seats. Two kings are sitting down discussing. We need to go to war. We need God to tell us should we or not. 400 prophets have spoken, believe me. 400 to 1 by election. What do you think? Let us vote. 400 cast their vote. Only one put his vote on the box that says no. 400 have no one put their vote and say yes. Listen to me. If 400 pastors on one side of such one, what will you do? It's a choice for you. But it's a spirit inside you that we born. Just like the days of Joseph. Even when that woman brought the Joseph coat and said he, he, he wanted to rape me. See the coat. We struggled and I took his coat. He is this and he ran away. How many will cast their vote? That's it. Joseph. Uh, yes. It is possible. If you know who Joseph is in the spirit. It doesn't matter if his hand print is all over the woman's room. Huh? And even if his hand print is all over the woman's body, by the Spirit of God steer you up, you might be the only one that will put that vote and say, mm -hmm. He did not. And you know you put your life on the line. Because everybody will cast them. Why? We are caught up and follow the instruction by the things we see. And when the king, when the Potiphar confronted Joseph, tell me, tell me the truth. I know if you swore by your blood, I know you are telling me the truth. Tell me what my wife is saying. Don't tell me that she's wrong. I want to teach you something tonight. Leave haters alone. Don't analyze their life. Don't analyze their ways. Don't, don't promote their their, their behavior. Don't, give, don't make them the center of any stage. Are you with me? Learn this today. Joseph said, with due respect for the Lord, the God of my father, Abraham, my father Jacob, the things that the father taught him, he began to discuss with me. As a result of that, I won't do something that is evil in the sight of God, neither in the absence of my master. He didn't say, Potiphar, let me tell you now, I'm going to tell you all the things that this woman has been doing when you are not alone. You are fighting the battle with the weapon of the woman, you will lose. The man might take it at your moment. By the next morning, your head will be in the chop. Because you have not proved anything. But he left her alone. And he discussed where he's been and where God has brought him. How he got to where he is. How you saw God's favor in my life. How you handed over the affairs of your house to me. How your house has prospered. Why will I do such an evil in the sight of God? He left him to judge. Instruction. Let the Spirit of the Lord instruct the way you talk and react in situation. Because there are many cases you try to prove. Even if you have the fact in your head, the court system will turn their face away. But there was one prophet. Micah. And both kings sat down and they sent for him. Having put on their robes in their void place, in their throne of the gates of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. All, verse 11. And Zedekiah, the son of Shaliha, made him horns of iron 
and he said, Thus said the Lord, with this, with this shall thou what? Push the Savior unto until thou hast what? Consume them. They were still prophesying and telling him, even by the leading of God, God has said, This is the home that you will blow in the battlefield, and when you blow it, you will defeat their Savior. Can somebody say, Lord, have mercy? We come against every misleading prophet, every misleading instruction, every misleading direction in the area of our lives, your marriage, your children, even careers. May the Lord deliver in the name of Jesus Christ. They went further to reaffirm him that he heard from God, and the Lord said, This is the horn that will blow. I have seen even Christians, believers, sell the truth of the gospel. In the name of politics, fighting for corrupt, turning their face from leaders that are doing things that are not right, trying to paint it because they say Jesus is good and they have Bible in their hands. Verse 12. And all the prophets did what prophesy so, saying, Go up to Ramoghead and prosper. For who? For the Lord shall deliver it unto the king's hand. Verse 13. And the messenger that was gone to call Micah spoke unto him, saying, Behold now, listen, the words of the prophet declared good unto the king with one mouth, 400. So let me tell you, let, let thy word, if you, okay? I pray thee. <laughs> Jesus. I am proud. You, you, you see, sometimes he was sent to go and call him. Are you with me? He wasn't sent to. He wasn't sent to negotiate or mediate what Micah. He was messing his mind up, trying to corrupt his thought to make sure that he prepared him. And sometimes, when you find yourself being interrupted, even when the Lord begins to speak, he begins to conflict, creating fear and doubts. Huh? That four hundred pastors. And some even came up with a home that he's going to use to win the battle. 400. Who was there? That pastor, this was there. A pastor, yes, Pastor, that. Pastor, wow. I know that pastor for 20 years. I know that one for 15 years. I know that. You know, that was the man. I, yes. I, 400. The ones I could not mention. Everybody saying this. Let me tell you, brethren. It's not a boost. My car is flesh and blood. His mind will shake. There will be a shaking. Did it happen to Samuel? Yes. Samuel came in the house of Jesse. When he saw the boys, when he saw David's brother standing, oh my goodness, look at their top, their height, their build. Some has gone to pump their muscles down to look like a real king. That can take Israel to war. The Bible says somewhere lifted up his oil because he saw them look. The Lord rebuked. No! Somewhere. That one. I have rejected him. That no cannot be king. Brethren, he went past all the sons of Jesus. By the time his spirit was subject to the Holy Spirit, they find no connection. Jesse, are these all your sons? He said, this one. We, we, we didn't inform him to step up. Instruction was given in the heart of Jesse that what? All what? Your sons. But you think that the ones that could be king and look like king should be around. Not the not mm, not the one that he's not that educated. He's, he's not that smart. Okay. I mean he, he does a lot of dumb stuff. You qualify him, you define him. I didn't tell him to stay. I, I actually want him to leave the house so he doesn't do embarrassing things. Do you know what that means? Someone said by the help of the Holy Spirit, nobody sits down. Send somebody, send somebody to go and bring him. Listen to me, brethren. 
instruction was given. And because he failed to follow instruction, he sent the king to watch the sheep. And he left the one that had no king to stay in the house. And he has been living with the king by heavenly standard. And he did not recognize the king. Why? Because he's looking at the king from the outside and he's judging him by occupation and his career as sheep boy. He comes home smelling like poop of sheep. He goes back in the he, he hardly shower because he comes and falls down sleeping and everybody covers their nose and look, yes. But they have a heart of a king. And when they sent for David, David was confused. I'm talking about instruction. Why would the father not say, Oh, let all the kids be home? Right? Someone said, Let all your children. Why won't you allow all the children? Let us be careful how we pick and choose. Because what you despise might be the king. What you put aside might be the savior. What you think is not important might be the thing that will deliver you. I am speaking mystery to us sometimes. And sometimes you look down on people and you have no idea behind them who is standing. Behind them who is in operation. I want you to hear this today. I imagine that when David walked into the house, it was a surprise. Do you know that was a good enough for just David as a young man to look at the father and say, you, even if my brothers are going to be anointed to be king, don't I deserve to be there in that inauguration and that dedication and that, I mean, anointing service to be inaugurated. At least I deserve to be there to see my brother be king. Somebody help me tonight. Let us assume David was in the world. Don't you think he should be there as a brother to say, Hello, one of my brothers is king. They looked at him, not even qualified to witness a king being anointed. That is how far, how cast people are pushed aside, even in ministry, even in the church. You ostracize certain people, you look past them. Because you look at their background and family background and there's no wealth behind it. There's no riches behind it. There's no connection behind it. But you have no idea what God is doing. Oh, he's a widow. Oh, he, he has no help. Oh, he's old. He has nothing. He's helpless. He's not intelligent. You have no idea. Who is holding you up in prayers? You have no idea the pillar of me. I've seen it. I remember in ministry, a woman that had the women ministry for many years stood by the pastor, go to the pastor's house, clean up and help and do things. I'm not talking as even in this land, not educated, old lady. But by the time the ministry began to grow, one day I, 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 I comforted it as a pastor. He said, No, 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 no. You, 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 you know when we are receiving delegates and people of high position in the church, we need a woman leader that can speak. I said, no, it's not a, no, no, Dr. This is it's going to be a very good woman leader. She said, doctor, you don't know. I said, no, pastor. I said, yo, I said, yo, I, I have the grace not to talk in the bed to say, can you just pray about it? Because I realized something about Peter. After Judah messed up, Thomas messed up, he says, let's look for somebody who has been in the ministry, who understands, who knows, not because the people are not qualified, but, but, but this person has labored. Don't you think a man's labor is worthy of this? A reward? Leadership takes nobody to heaven, but this is standard. She wasn't even told. All of a sudden, let us pray and we anoint Dr. Blah 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 as the new women leader and this, this, this. And in that anointing, the people were invited and pray and, and blasting in tongues, brethren. That was the end of the ministry. I saw it red hand. Who destroyed the ministry? The doctor. Who ruined everywhere? The doctor. She became the voice.
and the church was in this building. What do you call this veterans hall, VFW building? Not knowing that this old lady, listen to me, I stand at the altar to speak to you tonight. This old lady is not just a widow and an old lady. She was rich. None of them have any clue. That the Lord was leaning in her heart to finance the baby for her. But to their eyes, she looked like a beggar. I am talking to what I've witnessed. I didn't know. The one thing I know is something about her spirit. If somebody is rich in God and rich in the spirit, it's wealth. Forget about material stuff. But no one had any clue. By the time her resources was come to fullness, whether through stock, whatever it is, and everything she took it out, it went into ministry where she was not in. By the time I came across the pastor one of these days, somewhere he said, Could you believe? Lydia bought the building for the church where she went to. And when she was with us, she didn't do anything. I said, don't come into the hotel. Huh? One problem. I'm speaking to you, brethren, instruction. If you stay in God's face, need that pray, God will give you a glow of instruction. This man, look at this young man saying, he was lecturing the prophet as they were coming. You have no idea how much that will affect them. 400 pastors. 400 ministers. You, you, that will swallow what God is revealing to you to even say. Because why? You end up going to lose relationship with many. And you will call names. And I can tell you many here that people will say, ah, Pastor, look at you. You are endangering the life of people during COVID. You are still having service. I said, the Lord didn't tell me to close. Their life of feeding the sheep. Hear from God and pay deaf ears to people. Let them say whatever they want to say. But let the Lord judge. Because one thing I know the house of God, no man can close it. When Christ died on the cross, the Bible said they cut him ripped from top to bottom. He ripped open that anyone can come in. Who am I to stand at the door and be checking your temperature? What about mine? Because my body is cool. My body could be cool on the outside. What about the inside? My temperature could be perfect, but inside me I could be dead. Hello? That is the scripture. We must understand how we change. Oh, you are 101, get out. The temperature 105, no, you can't enter the church. Those are the ones that need church. Huh? Jesus said, I came for the sick, not the well. I came for sinner, not the righteous. I came for those in pain. I came for the discouraged. Stand up, brethren. Expect what will happen. But stand, the Lord will be your feet. Hear this, verse 14. He will say, I plead with you, I'm begging you. Yeah? Speak with one mouth, let that word I pray thee be like the words of one of them. I, and speak that which is what? Good. Verse 14. And Micah said, As the Lord liveth, repeat after me. Let's read verse 14 together. As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. That is the reason why it's good to wait on God's instruction and act on it. And let the world turn against you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Michael, shall we go against Ramon Gilead to battle? Or shall we what? Forbear. And he answered him, Go! And do what? Prosper! 
For the Lord shall what? Deliver it into the hand of the king. The king knew something. For the very first time. For the very first time. How is he sounding like the rest of the prophets? Let's read the next verse. And he said, And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjourn thee that thou tell me nothing but what? That which is true in the name of the Lord. How many times? Which means this is not the first time that he has come before the king, frightened, concerned, and speak what everybody is saying. And the king said, no. I know my heart tells me something. How many times have I said to you? Verse 17. And he said, now that you ask for the truth, because I was to tell you what everybody is saying, now you are what? Ask for the truth. Verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have no what? Not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no what? Master. Let them what? Return every man to his house in peace. Yes. Verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Joshua, Did not I tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? Did I tell you? That he will be one against 400 prophets. Everybody has said something good. But look at what he's saying. But you ask for the truth. Do you know how many people come and they already prepare what you have to tell them? Huh? And they're just expecting you to validate it as a pastor. Are you with me today? Didn't I tell you, verse 19? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him. On the right hand and on the left hand, 20. And the Lord said, Who shall what? Persuade Ahab that he might what? Go up and fall in Ramogilid. And one said, On this matter. And another said, On that matter. Verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and do what? I will be what? A lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets because he has become reprobate. He has become reprobate. And each time there is a prophetic good instruction of God, he is against it. As a result of that pattern, let him get what he wants. Brethren, we are talking about the battles for instruction, the battle to hear God and follow God's instruction. Can you imagine? We are in the face of going to war. Should we or not? And yet we cannot know because why? 400 prophets is speaking against one. Stand on your feet this morning, tonight. Stand on your feet. We shall finish up it in the next series. And I want you to pray. Please, we have to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, in the decision of my life, Deliver me from this kind of prophets. Prayer. Every advice that will mislead and misdirect me and embark into things that God will not honor. Father, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, let me not live a life. Let me not live a life that will result to reprobate and lie spirit. Give me what I want in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray in the name of Jesus. Help me, Father, if there's any area right now that we are operating in, living, functioning, that is a lie. And we are believing a lie long enough and the lie is beginning to look like true that we end our lead of destruction. Father, deliver. Break the church loose from it in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice and pray tonight because many are heading the wrong direction. The Bible says my people are destroyed. Perishing for lack of knowledge, for lack of direction, for lack of the truth. I want you to pray that in every area, let the direction, the instruction of God prevail. 
Lead us, Lord. Guide us. Direct us, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. We're talking about 400 prophets. Where is the church today? Where is the body of Christ today? What are we hearing? It's supposed to be one voice. When it comes to issues and matter, you are hearing confusion. Some are saying, let the church keep marching. Some will say, no, let us stand still because the system says we should. Some are saying, don't preach the gospel because the system says don't. Some are saying, don't speak if you offend people. Who will you follow? They told Peter, stop preaching in this name. Stop preaching with the name of Jesus. Do you know how long they've been trying to shut that name down? Up to now, the name of Jesus is still a problem to many. Peter and James and they said, should we obey God or we would rather obey man? Who should we obey? Who are you going to obey? I want you to pray for that grace. To hear God's instruction. And the Lord said, go, go. If the Lord has not spoken, stand and wait. Wait, the Lord will create a path for you. Lift up your voice to man and pray, Father, give me the grace. Decisions, jobs, jobs, so Lord, reveal it to me, show me, give me direction. Lord, give us direction. Lord, concerning my son, concerning my daughter. Lord, when it comes to turning our children, Lord, open our eyes, Lord, 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 give us revelation. Give me direction. Give us instruction. Give us Many of the prayers that we pray, the, the answer to those prayers are instruction given by God. Go and do this. Go and do that. I have placed people in your life. To tell you what to do. You might not like them. They might not look like those you think they should speak to you. But open your ears. Before Micah came. To tell him and give him the truth from heaven. He already displayed hate. You are hearing it tonight. Even whenever you are on Facebook. Or, or, or watching this all over the world. Anywhere. You cannot hate your pastor and benefit from him. You cannot gain from the grace that you hate. You cannot reap from the grace that you hate. You cannot harvest from the grace that you despise. It is impossible. You are wasting your time. You're going to bring curse upon yourself. Many are God sick for even thinking evil towards Moses. Many have despised the decision of Moses for marrying an Ethiopian woman. You despise that insult decision made by the prophet, minister, those that God has said to watch over your soul. You practice dishonor and disrespect and you expect honor. No, you are bringing curse and judgment. I have to tell you the truth. Many get sick for no reason. Many are crying in the ocean begging with cup of water while you are sitting in that ocean why? you have despised it and so you have been blinded you can't see the ocean you have neglected it hear this to the instruction the word of God cannot be broken there's no way around it I want you to pray to my this man said, I hate him I don't like him yet you stand every day and that man lay hands on you and pray for what you don't like. You are playing with the things, dangerous things in the spirit. It is very dangerous. I am saying it tonight. Generally in the body of Christ, wherever you are hearing this, even in ministry, many are secretly hiding, creating a forming rebel group, causing problems. And you sit down and you watch that problem in the church. And you wonder the pastor is going to try to figure out and solve it. You are distracting the things of the spirit. No way. Nobody scatters the house of God and the house is together. It's not going to happen. Okay. Instruction. Sabbath and Tobiah. Spirit of an each of them. The lost things have become. It has turned it into foolishness. I have to speak this truth to you today. As a result of him speaking hate, the Lord said, No, he has to go to that wall. His prophet 400, they will tell him to go because his, his heart will lead towards lies, and I will give it to him. Read the book of Romans. The Lord gives you 
The Lord answers your prayer according to your heart, not his will. You want it, go get it. And many are receiving answers to prayer. Ah, God answered me, yes, because that's what you want. You are departed from his will. You are expecting to receive from God, but in your heart you hate the prophet. You hate the one that feeds you. You bite the finger that feeds you. Spiritually, you cause wound and blood. You cause pain. You afflict the atmosphere. Your ways and your character create problems. You cause the men of God and the women of God that are watching over your soul, you cause them sleepless nights trying to solve issues instead of staying in God's place praying. You invite the things you can handle. The Lord visits situations like that. Next week, we're going to continue and see how this king could not receive it. And you will understand it. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Paul came across this situation in the life of a woman. A man that was giving the wrong direction to a deputy. There are people in high position and are misleading people from knowing the truth. And yet he's a close friend to the deputy. The right hand man. And when Paul saw him, he said, look at you. You full of mischief. Full of evil. Your heart is not right. The hand of God is upon you. He said, from this day, you shall be led by him. It's Smite him with blindness, wickedness. The Bible calls it unreasonable and wicked men. They see people that are giving for them. they never support their work or give for the work of God and the factors that are given. Misleading and misdirecting, neglecting people from knowing the right instructions to do for God. We shall see the end. The danger. This series was the danger of neglecting God's instruction. My prayer day and night is that Lord, let me not speak or prophesy things that you have not said to me to tell the church. And when I say this is what the Lord is saying, because I am speaking to you that the Lord has revealed it. It's your church, Lord, give me the grace. It's your church, give me the grace, Lord. Give me the grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I am speaking to you tonight. Open your heart and say, Lord, give, show me the root. Show me why this happened. That this. Is there an instruction? Is there something that I am missing? I pray you tonight the Lord will find a way and visit you, either in vision or in dream, in one way or the other, for your understanding. And the deliverance will come. Miriam, Moses had no clue that Miriam was interfering into the instruction given to him by God. Brethren, it is very important that we understand these principles. When we neglect them, there are severe consequences. And we might be looking in the wrong direction, trying to find out where is this problem coming from? Seek God. The Lord will speak. Father, we thank you tonight. Father Lord, we bless your name tonight. Father Lord, we exalt your name tonight. We pray, Holy Spirit, for the grace not to neglect your instruction. We need your instruction in the time that we are in. Many have neglected it. They died in their own soul. Situations and circumstances rose up in their life that they couldn't handle. Not knowing what the problem is. Just a simple neglect. Micah came to make him understood the 400 prophets are not telling you what is right from the heavens. How can you alone how can you alone be different from the 400? Yes. Brethren, by the grace of God I speak over your life tonight. You be set apart. You be set apart. Lord government is set my life up. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lift up your title of it tonight. Before we lift up, let's, pray, let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely.
goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen and amen Exodus chapter 14 verse 14 says the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace God bless you